Hey, what's up? This is Vic Video Pick. In this video, we are going to analyze time lapses made with a fixed point of view but with moving target, more specifically, car traffic. I will give you first all sorts of tips for shooting and post processing. And then in the second part, I will show you a series of time lapses made with different intervals and with different shutter speed. So, stay tuned. There are several specific points to take care of when shooting time lapses with car traffic. Choosing the frequency of shots is absolutely critical. Different intervals will yield very different results. This is why I will propose you several different clips of the same location made with different frequencies in order to help you to choose. Shutter speed has to match the chosen frequency of shots in order to obtain the correct amount of motion blur. A general guideline will be a speed half of the interval between shots. So if you take one picture every two seconds, the correct shutter speed will be one second. And the filters are a must when shooting during the day. I am often asked which filter I use. Well, it does vary accordingly to what camera you have, where you live, and what sort of photography you do. I do not use the variable ND filter, as I have tried two different models and they never work correctly. In fact, as you can see, Hoya, in their website, warns you against them. They do tell that they tend to have a, a sort of a cross shapes in the image, I tend to avoid shooting around midday, that is actually when I sleep, but only on Monday and Thursday. I cannot sleep much because then I have to make videos for you. My time lapses are always done within 2-3 hours before sunset or after sunrise, or else at night. In these conditions I carry two different filters for each lens, a prone 500, 9 stops, and a prone 16, 4 stops. Because my camera has very poor ISO performance, so I always use the base ISO, 200. Exceptionally, I use 400. I'm seriously thinking of getting the new Nikon D850, in which case a single prone 500 will be enough, as the camera allows for at least 6 stops of very usable ISO. Look what happens when shooting during the day without ND filters. The shutter speed is way too fast, and the result is a total disaster. Of course, a good tripod is a must, although the real problem is to find a few inch where to park a tripod in London. Every single spot seems to be private land, with security people materializing as soon as you put up a tripod. As an example, while I was shooting this time lapse, I was stopped by security. Focusing with the ND filter can be quite hard, as the image gets black until you really decrease the shutter speed. But focusing with a very slow shutter speed is not easy. So, it is better to focus first and then add the filter. Well, of course I made this clip out of focus on purpose for this presentation. You should not think that I made a mistake. When shooting at night, step down your aperture in order to get some nice starlight. Good quality lens tend to produce better results. But let's go down to action. This is the first setting. We are at the entrance of the city of London, the financial district. And this is a good spot for what we are doing, because uh, we have cars and buses coming from all the way, people walking and even train passing here above. When I arrived it started to get very overcast and darker and I was a bit afraid because I only had the, the big ND filter and I was a bit on the limit of being underexposed. The image out of the camera looked like this. Well, as you can see, it is very dark, but Lightroom managed to recover it. Well, there's perhaps a bit of noise here the sky a tiny bit, but we can uh, arrange that in, uh, in After Effects. So we make sure that uh, all 300 files are selected and choose uh, Save Metadata to File. 
to make sure that all the edits made in uh, Lightroom uh, will be taken in by After Effects. We can now jump to After Effects, import uh, our raw file directly into After Effects. So we click on the first one, make sure the camera raw sequence is checked, and import. OK. Now we'll drag the icon down to this other icon to create a new composition. Here it is. The post-processing in this case is very straightforward. We are not going to apply any panning and zooming because there is already a lot of movement in the image itself. First thing we'll do is we duplicate the layer just in case, right-click on it, and choose Word Stabilizer, because uh, it's always good to do some stabilization for the little tiny movement that the camera might have made because of wind or other. It was getting darker and darker. Let's check if there is too much difference of light from the beginning to the end. Well, actually, the end is quite dark. We can create a new layer by Ctrl Alt Y. In this layer, we're going to add uh, color correction, lumetri color, which is very similar to the basic panel in Lightroom. We open the layer, open effect, lumetri color, basic corrections, and tone. What we're going to do is the exposure. So, with the playhead at the very beginning, we can click on the stopwatch to insert a keyframe. We can leave the exposure as it is, or perhaps just a tiny bit less, let's say minus 0.2. Now let's move to the end by pressing end. And here we want to increase the exposure by at least one stop, so let's press one. It's not bad, let's go back to the beginning. Well, let's do 1.2, just a bit more. That looks fine to me. Now let's check for noise. Yes, there is some noise, definitely. So we can uh, denoise a bit. So we add another layer, Control Alternate Y, and we choose Remove Grain. There's a lot of parameters that we can modify for the fan tuning, but let's keep it very simple. Let's see the preview of the denoiser. It looks fine, it is removing a lot of the noise. So we can, from preview, we can go to final output. Let's go back to our normal view. And we can now press Ctrl Alt M to send the file to encoding. And this is the result of our encoded clip. This is an example showing why it is always better to apply Warp Stabilizer. While I was shooting this time-lapse, somebody passing by touched my tripod. And as you can clearly see, there is a big jump in the middle of the sequence. Let's have a look at the same clip after using Warp Stabilizer. As you can see, it looks perfectly smooth now. I'm now going to show you several time-lapses of car traffic shot with different intervals of seconds and different shutter speed. As you can see, it is possible to get very different results by changing these two parameters. But it's going to be up to you to judge which one works better by writing in the comments below.
Excellent! Now we know everything about time lapses with cars. If you like this video, share it with your friends on social medias and click on the thumbs up icon down below. Things are getting more and more exciting in this channel, so it is a very good idea to subscribe in order to be kept updated. Besides my tutorials about time lapses and Lightroom, I've made uh, two short movies with time lapses and drone footage, a low Brighton and around Sussex, that you can watch by clicking on the link above here. I'm sure you'll like them. They're good fun. Soon I will also be starting tutorials about Photoshop. I will be analyzing Photoshop strictly under the point of view of photography, and particularly linking it with a Lightroom workflow. You can subscribe to my channel by the red button below or by clicking on my head somewhere around here. If you would like to watch other time lapses or Lightroom tutorial, you will find links on the screen. Bye for now.